I wish I had your talent. I wish I could give it to you, man. But look, hard work beats talent, and the talent feels to work hard. Yeah. Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. This is something that always stuck in my head as I was a young teen when I first heard those words utter out of Kevin Durant's mouth. And that is true. Give me a person in any field of work, study, or craft, and the results will show the same. Well, today we are going to show why that is important. Greetings to all of my avid supporters and true dogs over on this channel that's helping this community of true basketball competitors grow. Please like, like, like this video so we can continue to build from the ground up. The Indiana Fever had themselves a brilliant showing for the 2022 WNBA Draft. After rebuilding for the past few years and dealing with bad luck, they were able to pull in some real talent with Baylor duo Melissa Smith and Queen Agbo, who have been killing it with the Bears. And they also picked up Stanford's Lexi Hall, South Carolina's Destiny Henderson, and Jackson State's Amisha Williams Holiday, who made history with a pretty impressive feat being the first HBCU player drafted to the WNBA since 2003. But the player we will discuss and be focusing on today is Louisville's Emily Anxler. So Anxler was born in Queens, New York, and she has an extensive basketball background, picking up the ball as early as three years old. She first began playing in an all-boys basketball program at a Catholic institution. That is where she started to develop her toughness and physicality. Continuing her love for the game, she would wind up playing street ball in New York legendary leagues. And as she put it, it is what gave her her edge and competitiveness. And it shows with her activity on the court. She attended and played for Syracuse University the first three years of her collegiate career before transferring to Louisville where she fell in love with the coach and their style of play. She came up very big this season and surely with her inspiring play for Louisville all the way into the Final Four where they would face a powerhouse South Carolina team with our future teammate, Destiny Anderson, and Aaliyah Boston that would eventually go on to win the title. Although she was always a highly recruited player, she had sort of a slip down the draft boards and a lot of people's mock drafts, but her performance in her senior season really separated her in terms of other prospects. This is what always separates some players from others. As I shown in the beginning, Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. I will also take it a step forward. Having a true love of the game is what leads to someone having that hard worker mentality when stepping on the hardwood. There's obviously fundamental issues wrong with women's basketball and the WNBA in particular, but sometimes that can't be the excuse. For example, a lot of players talk about not getting playing time at whatever program that they play for or not being noticed because they aren't overhyped or have, the, have enough exposure. But a lot of times, those players are just not playing with that particular edge that is needed to edge out your opponent. I mean, that is why they call it edge, because you are getting that small something that will help you eclipse the next man or woman. So the issue a lot of aspiring young Hoopers face, whether we're talking about potential recruits wanting to play on the collegiate level or WNBA draft or training camp invitee hopefuls, is that they don't really know what it takes to reach that next level. They don't know what scouts and coaches are looking for. To get to this question, we have to get to the bottom of what the league is. And this is looking at the game in relationship to how the WNBA can grow and expand. Just in general, across the leagues, competition, and gender, basketball has become too offensive-oriented to the point where people have been forgetting to do the small things that put them over the top. Now, this is a tricky thing to talk about because the WNBA needs more offense and better offensive players, but they actually have a lot of offensive talent in terms of style of play. They just really struggle when it comes to pace of play, which means they are essentially playing too slow and inefficient. That's a problem for another discussion, but the league also needs better defenders that can really separate a team from being good to a championship contender. There are interior defenders, but there needs to be better perimeter oriented and rotational defenders. This is something Angsler brings to the table as she is everywhere on the court and she will find a way to get steals. Back to the point about the league having a slow pace, you would think playing great defense will slow the pace down further. And while this is true to some degree, getting steals and running out on that break 
will see the pace of the WNBA improve, and that actually will be a huge plus for the excitement of the sport. So if you are one of these potential players that are wondering what coaches, recruiters, or scouts want from the next level, they want players that can improve their defensive and offensive efficiency. It's not just the good defensive plays is the point I really want to drive home. Because, yes, you can make some great plays on the ball, but you don't necessarily have the motor to turn that energy on all game. And you don't have the courage to turn it on at the highest points of the game or the biggest games of the season dealing with that pressure. Someone like Emily Ansler has that. And this is what builds team identity. I call players like her culture builders or identity players. And if you are struggling to get playing time or get on a team at all, this is what I would focus on becoming, a real culture builder. That is something that when they get on a the team, they shift the whole mindset of that team. This effect is playing out right now in the NBA with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Patrick Beverly has come in and all of the key rotational players have embraced their attitude. Team culture is important. And it will help you win, but not only that, it is great for marketability of the sport because fans know exactly why they come to watch a team. This type of excellent attention to the qualities is what we need more of, and not just the WNBA, but in basketball as a whole. This is also how players get noticed and stand out. The Indiana Fever has set themselves up nicely, and they very well could be the team of the future. But that's it for this video, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know down below what you would like to see a video on next. Also, in the comment section, let me know what you think teams look for the most out of under-recruited players. Peace.